Hello everyone. Been a little busy around here. So welcome back to the Lone Star Homestead. Been busy getting a lot of things done here. Here's the video of the new hen house I built. I said I would post a video. And uh, here it is. This is 100% snake proof. As you can see, you got lovely half inch hardware cloth. The only thing I haven't done yet is get some wood strips to screw onto here to help hold this down and not rely on the staples. It's been up for a little while and uh, I'm going to give you a tour of just how I build it and uh, show you what it takes. I figured out the cost. Uh, I think it was a little less than $150. Uh, so I used some of the material I already had. And uh, as you can see, these are landscape timbers treated. Half the cost of a 4x4 four four treated. And they work great. And what I did was I notched the top. And I'll show you the inside. So the treated two by four would be flush with the outside of the landscape timber. Then I used quarter inch carriage bolts to bolt them to the top. And I got uh, two, three, I got four. This is a 10 foot by 10 foot square. And uh, I buried some sheet metal uh, about 12 inches or so into the ground, keep the mice and snakes out. I put two by four treated between the landscape timbers so I can screw the sheet metal to it, keep the snakes out. And I have, uh, uh, it's open on, on all four sides. I got sheet metal on the back, about two thirds of the way up. Uh, sheet metal about halfway up one side open so plenty of fresh air i'm going to make a swing down uh cover or awning whatever you want to call it so i can put it down in the winter time and i uh, keep the cold air from blowing in so i'm going to take you inside here and and uh show you what it looks like on the inside made uh, made the door out of two by four treated put my hinges on there and such and uh, these are lovely landscape timbers they work great I use them for a lot of posts I got a lot of trees uh, I'm cutting down so I can get the sun visible for the uh, uh, west side of my property for the solar and uh, so I got about half a dozen trees I'm going to take out. But as you can see, it's uh, sheet metal buried. I put a little more sheet metal inside just to keep them hopefully from digging and uh, put the treated landscape timbers in concrete. I can come in here with a rake and rake this up. I throw a little grass in here, you know, yard clippings and such when I cut the grass. I made a natural roost here for this old boy my other rooster was trying to kill him so i separated him and the other rooster i'm going to put in the crock pot make some good old chicken and noodles and i'm going to keep this old boy because he's real friendly and uh he'll be okay with the seven hens i got and uh but as you can see i got sheet metal all the way around and i got it buried in the back as well and uh, over here, probably a little overkill on the inside, but I put treated two by four on the side so I can screw the sheet metal to it. Made these a little, you know, it's a uh, aluminum eighth inch by, I don't know, inch, inch and a quarter. And uh, a couple of holes helps to support the treated two by fours. And I'm going to show you what I did with the top. Not completely done. Almost there. 
But I used some old aluminum sheet metal that I got off an old trailer and uh, use it for the roof. And yes, it is flat. It works perfectly fine. And I put these old two by fours across there so I can uh, screw the sheet metal down to it. Help seal it off a little bit from the water. Uh, as you can see on this landscape timber, how I notched it, notched it just a little bit further than I needed, but uh, cut it flat, run a carriage bolt through it, and uh, they will be on there a long time. <laughs> so they will work uh, really well. I need to put in a couple of more pieces of a two by four, one here, another one over there, and another one over here, but, and a couple of pieces in the middle. But uh, I'm getting ready to do that. Right now I'm getting my solar panel wiring done. But as you see, I used old steel uh, corrugated metal for this. And uh, that white is green on the outside. That's aluminum. The top is aluminum. Steel gets 10 times hotter than aluminum. If you can find old aluminum siding from an old trailer, or mobile home, whatever, uh, get it cheap, get it. It's worth a lot more than the steel. And uh, doesn't get near as hot. If you're building a chicken tractor, use aluminum sheet metal. And I got a bunch of it. So I'm going to get the uh, chicken tractor done before too long here. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks by the looks of things. These are the old girls from the second hatch. And they are about two months and they're getting ready to come out. As soon as I transfer that old boy to the hens and get that other rooster. Here's a trick that I do for feeding. These girls are in a rambunctious mode for some reason, but I took the bottom of a bucket and cut a big old tray. You know, you can, you can buy a big tray, probably a buck or two, but I have a hole right here and uh, I have a plastic bottle cap from a half gallon or one gallon milk jug that fits real snug on there. So what I do is I have a feed container. I can take this cap off, make a funnel out of an old two liter bottle Makes it easy to fill up. Don't have to take it out. Time to wash this one again. And uh, much easier to fill. And I have that big round tray there because they like to throw the food around still for some reason. So that's, uh, that's why it's, uh, it's on there. And whatever spills out, that old rooster will make good use of it. And uh, I always cover this in case it rains. We're going to get rain for the next week, so I'm trying to get videos done. But you can cut a hole in here uh, for that uh, filler tube on the feeder, and uh, that way it'll lay flat. But I have I have a piece of tin over there, sheet metal. But I made this little cage for quail when I raised quail. So, uh, cleaned it real good and, uh, use it for the chickens. And it has half inch hardware cloth on the bottom and a regular chicken wire and uh, a couple of eyelets, screw in eyelets. I'll put a bolt in here just to use for, uh, keeping it closed. But basically, uh, that's just about it. Now this guy, yeah, say cheese there, buddy. Come here. Come here. The other rooster 
is a little bigger than him, but the other rooster attacked me four or five times and those claws really hurt. Anybody has been attacked by a rooster knows. So I'm going to take his head off and put him in a crock pot. And, uh, I know, I know old ginger girl will like that. So I got a bucket out here, put feed in a little, little one, uh, coffee, coffee jug. I use put water in and, uh, works real well i'll get a five gallon bucket i already picked up a couple of them from walmart price of those are going through the roof i got it for a little less than four bucks so put a lid on that a little vinegar apple cider vinegar and put the in water and put a lid on that works pretty good it'll last almost a week but this is how i did the, the roof uh, the, the roost here, yeah, I got a bunch of branches. I'm going to put another one a little bit lower, about a foot, maybe 12, 16 inches lower. Now I'm going to run it all the way across because I got four more that's getting ready to occupy the temporary housing for the chickens. And that comes in handy. Also, you can acclimate the new birds to the current flock a whole lot easier and still take care of them real well and it keeps them separated. I don't hurt each other. They get used to seeing each other and then uh, they'll get along. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I will uh, try to get uh, a couple other things done and get them posted. So I want to thank you all for stopping by and y'all have a good one until next time.